I do deliveries for my local Papa John's. I'm in college, and this is just one of the few jobs I could choose from. Some of my friends work here too, but since we're all delivery drivers, we don't really see each other, even when we have the same shifts. This story happened last December when I was picking up some extra shifts before Christmas. It was snowing a lot that night, making deliveries take longer than usual, while also getting more orders than usual. I was never too stressed about work, but having to go non-stop for hours on end was definitely not fun. At 9.30 I grabbed my next set of orders and got in my car. I had two orders to deliver, and the houses were just five minutes apart, but they were both pretty far from the shop about 15 minutes away, which felt more like 25 minutes in the snow. The first part of the drive was normal, but then it took me to a less visited part of town. The houses here were older, and most of the shops in the area had closed. Nobody came around here unless they lived here. After 20 minutes of driving, I pulled into one of the neighborhoods and drove down the road toward the first house. The road was empty, no cars parked on the side, and most of the houses looked empty. I got to the first address, parked on the road, and walked up to the front door. A kind old man answered and paid for the pizza. Then, I went back to my car and set the directions for the next house. The next house was in the same neighborhood, but I realized as I drove that it was taking me deeper into the neighborhood, where there were fewer houses and more space between them. By the time I got to the address, I couldn't see any other houses around, just trees. I parked on the street and walked up to the front door. It was cold and the snow was soaking my clothes. After a minute, the door opened. A middle-aged woman, who looked like she'd just woken up, answered. Her hair was messy, and she had tired, emotionless eyes. I have your order for two pizzas, I said, holding out the boxes and giving her the total to pay. She took the boxes and placed them on a table inside, then told me to wait while she got the cash. Another minute went by before she opened the door again. She started sifting through some cash, counting it slowly and trying to add it all up. There was definitely something weird about her. Everything she did was just odd. Then, she started making small talk, asking how my day was and all that. I responded politely, but it felt like she was stalling. At some point, I looked back at my car to get away from the uncomfortable situation for a moment. That's when I saw a man standing right next to it, looking in the windows and doing something to the door. When I looked back at the woman, her face had changed to anger. I figured it out too late she grabbed me and started yelling to the man by my car. He turned and sprinted towards us. As she tried to pull me into the house, I pushed her away and broke free. My instincts took over and I sprinted into the trees. I could hear the man's heavy footsteps crunching in the snow behind me until they finally started to fade away. After two minutes of sprinting, I stopped to catch my breath. The moon lit up the forest enough for me to navigate back to one of the streets in the neighborhood. I called 911 once I got service, and after 10 minutes of waiting in the cold, an officer arrived. Another patrol car went to the house and found the man outside trying to break into my car. To sum it up, the couple was likely out of money and trying to rob my car. The woman's distraction was meant to keep me busy while the man did the job. Since I saw what he was doing, who knows what they would have done next. Maybe they would have let me go, but it's obvious I would have reported them, so I doubt it. I'm just thankful I got away unharmed and that they were caught before they could try it on anyone else. It was almost midnight, and I was on my way to my next delivery. I'd been driving for about four hours and was exhausted. I knew this would be my last order before heading home because driving in the ice and snow while sleepy isn't safe. I was on a fairly empty side road connecting two main towns in our city. There was a five-mile stretch with no buildings, houses, or places to stop. As I drove down this section, I suddenly felt a wave of tiredness. I lost focus on the road for just a few seconds, but that was enough. I hit a patch of ice and slid toward the side of the road. I woke up fully but couldn't control the car. It slid into a small ditch between the road and the woods. The crash wasn't bad, thanks to the snow, but it shook me up. My car was stuck on the incline of the ditch in thick snow. I tried maneuvering the car to get some traction, but it only made things worse. While trying to figure out what to do, I noticed car headlights down the road. At first I thought it was just a passing car, 
but after a few seconds I realized it wasn't moving. Someone was parked down the road with their headlights on. It was a bit unnerving, given the coincidence of being on this long, empty road. They weren't close enough to help, but they weren't far enough not to see my headlights. I called my dad, knowing he'd still be awake and could help. I'd never been in a situation like this before, so I didn't know what to do. He said he would call roadside assistance and then drive down to wait with me. I felt relieved knowing he would be there in just a few minutes. I looked back at the road for the car's headlights, but now they were gone. It was too dark to see anything without lights, so I didn't know if they had driven away or just turned off their lights. The more I thought about it, the more it creeped me out. I kept my eyes on the road, feeling paranoid. The silence made it even worse. I could only hear the wind outside my car. Then, after three minutes of waiting, I saw a figure walking toward my car. He was coming from the direction where the headlights had been. He got to about 15 feet from the front of my car and stopped. He just stood there in the snow, facing me but not moving. I couldn't see much of him as he had a hoodie covering his face. The way he stood there, staring, started to terrify me. I honked my horn softly a few times to let him know I was in the car and could see him. He didn't move or acknowledge me. Just as I was about to call my dad again, the man turned around and walked away, disappearing down the road. I called my dad to tell him about this strange person, and he said he was just a minute away. I stayed on the phone with him, and 30 seconds later, I saw headlights turn on down the road and move toward my car. They parked across the road and turned off their lights. I couldn't see over the ditch, but I heard a car door open. I yelled to my dad about what was happening. Then my dad's car pulled up, screeching to a stop in front of my view. I heard him yell at someone as they got back in their car and sped away. My dad said the guy was holding something that looked like he was going to break into my car. Everything was okay after that and my car didn't have much damage. I don't know what was about to happen that night but I'm really lucky not to have found out. I usually do errands on the weekends or when school is out. This Friday night I started driving around 6 p.m., setting up the app to get some orders. It wasn't snowing, but it was really cold and windy, with a thin layer of snow on the roads from earlier in the day. After a few orders I got one to pick up from a nearby Burger King. Once I got the food, I checked the app to see where I was going. It wasn't a house address, which was odd. When I zoomed in I saw it was at the corner of two streets, looking like maybe a gas station. Even though it was unusual, I started driving over, thinking it might just be an awkward interaction in the parking lot. As I got closer I saw it was indeed a gas station. The gas station looked normal, but there were no cars in the parking lot. I pulled in and parked in a spot at the back, then stayed in my car to look around. The app should have notified them that I'd arrived, so I expected someone to be waiting. But after a few minutes nobody showed up. I sent a text through the app, letting them know I was there. I got out of my car to see if I could spot anyone. The intersection was empty, no cars were passing by, and all the stores across the street seemed to be closed. The longer I stood there, the more unsettled I felt. I checked my phone, but still no response from the customer. Just as I was about to get back into my car, a truck pulled into the gas station. It was an older dark red pickup with tinted windows. The truck passed the pumps and parked a few spots away from me. The driver door opened and a man stepped out. He looked like he had been living on the road dirty, stained, and torn clothes. As he got out, I held up the bag with a slight smile, but he didn't even look at it. He kept his eyes locked on me as he approached. Something felt very wrong, and I knew I needed to get out of there. I set the bag on the ground, and the man started walking faster, as if he knew I was going to leave. I got in my car and started backing out just as he reached my door. He quickly ran back to his truck, leaving the food on the ground. I sped out of the gas station, running a red light and driving fast until I reached a busier area. The truck followed me for a minute, but then turned away once I was safe. I called the police, but nothing really came of it. In the heat of the moment, I didn't think to check the man's license plate. Looking back, I'm not sure if he even had one. I don't know what his intentions were, but I'm glad I trusted my instincts and left when I did.